Okay, hello everybody. Today we're here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in A2A Simulations Piper Comanche 250. We have a 150 nautical mile flight from Sierra Romeo, Quebec, Sarasota to Delta Alpha Bravo, Daytona Beach International. Both of those are payware airports and it should be some awesome scenery. We've got some real world weather to deal with and because of it, we'll be flying IFR on today's flight. It should be an awesome flight, so let's hop into the pilot seat and get started. All right, for this flight, we have a new livery. Check out the video details if you'd like to download it. We're parked here at Dolphin Aviation at Sarasota. We've got Monica flying with us, but no other passengers. If you look down at the tablet, you can see it's 93 degrees Fahrenheit in the cabin, so let's open up a window to let some air in. And if we go back to the tablet, I noticed that all of the speeds are listed on this main page here, so you can see your takeoff speeds, climb, approach, landing. Nice to have them all in one spot. We can toggle over to the checklist next and get started. We'll remove the control locks, then head down and get the master switch on. Fuel gauge left and right are coming up to full. We'll check that on the wing tanks. Next, we'll head down here and get our fuel selectors to left and right because we plan on pulling fuel samples during the walk around. And then we'll turn on all of our switches so we can verify the lights. And for the walk arounds, I'll just hit the highlights of some of the things you get with the A2A simulation Comanche. So we'll head out and you can do things like check the fuel, look inside of the wingtip tanks and see, in this case, there's no fuel. Look in the wing tanks and see that you've got Avgas Blue right up to the top. You can pull fuel samples and you'll actually see if there's water or contamination. In this case, it all looks good. You can check the oil both for quantity and color of the oil. Do things like remove tie downs, pitot tube cover, and check that the pitot tube is warm. You can click on surfaces like the stabilator back here and move it up and down to check that it moves freely. You can load up your baggage by clicking on it and then close and lock your baggage door. So I love the walk around. It's an awesome feature. Now we've got the beacon on. We'll continue with our checklist. We've verified once again that our fuel selectors are uh, set to where we want. We've got the mixture in, cracked the throttle, brought the prop into full forward, carb heat is in. Next we'll get the master switch back on. We'll check the prop is clear and call clear prop. Now we're going to head down here and get the fuel pump on. And we're going to watch the fuel pressure come up and then peak. And once it does, we'll turn the fuel pump back off. You can see it's very slowly rising. It's in the green. It's coming to the top of the green now. Fuel pump back off. Next, we'll prime it. So the primer is over on the right, right of the carb heat there. So we'll unlock that and prime that a couple strokes. Now we're ready to start. So magnetos to both. Feet on the brakes and press the starter button. And there we go, we've got a good start. We'll check that we have oil pressure and we do have oil pressure, it's in the green already. So now we can head down to the mixture and lean it for ground operations. All right, that's the end of the engine start checklist. Let me close the door here, it was opened and the uh, prop wash actually blew it closed, which is a nice touch. Let's head to the before taxi checklist. So we'll get the avionics on. With the avionics on, move in here a little bit. We'll check that our flight plan has loaded and everything looks good there. Now before we get our frequency set up, let's plug in the headphones and notice how it got quieter and we turned on noise canceling and it got even quieter, so that sounds a lot better. So while we're plugging in all the frequencies, I'll open up fourth flight and take you through the flight plan. So you can see southern Florida is just a mess of weather currently with convective sigmets, thunderstorms, and lightning going on. If we check out our destination report of Daytona, it also has a convective sigmet around it, uh, which is the red polygon. And then really all of Florida has an outlook convective segment around it, which is future weather. If we turn on the radar animations, 
we can see that the weather in the south is moving to the southeast. So that's good, that's moving away from us. So we're, we're already north of that weather. We look at Daytona, it's moving to the east. So hopefully that's going to track out to the east uh, before we take off and get there. But we're going to have to pay attention to what the weather looks like as we're approaching that area. Toggling to the IFR map and clearing off all these overlays so that we can better see our flight path. We can zoom in to our departure field of Sarasota and check out the weather. And you can see the weather there is actually pretty good. It's VFR, uh, winds are 270 at 11 knots. The tap looks pretty good too. So we've got VFR, uh, not bad at all. So we're going to depart there and get radar vectors for the Victor 579 airway. Uh, we've got a TFR here for Tropicana Field, but that only goes up to 3,000. We'll be flying above that, so it's not going to affect us. We're going to turn at PIE, PI, VOR, and then follow the Victor 152 airway up until we get to, to Kaiser. And then we're going to request vectors to final, which makes sense from the direction that we're coming uh, for Runway 7, which is currently in use. Now, if we look at the weather for Daytona Beach, uh, it's a bit of a mess. You can see it has thunderstorms. Uh, the winds aren't too bad. The winds look good, but really the problem is the TS thunderstorms. You've got distant lightning. If you look at the TAF, uh, we've got a uh, temporary status, which has thunderstorms and rain uh, with clouds broken. If you can't uh, decode all that, you can just scroll down in foreflight and it decodes it all for you. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. We'll be following the weather as we approach, and we might need to divert if the thunderstorms haven't moved out of the area. You can see we have some pie reps. If we click on those, it's turbulence near the Daytona area, but as we head towards Sarasota, it's actually smooth air reports. So they were expecting turbulence, but they're reporting that the air was smooth. We need to fly at least at 4,000 feet for the minimum on route altitude, and we're going to pick 5,000 because our performance just decreases past that. So uh, gallons per hour will go up and time will go up as we go above 5,000. And there's not really much difference in the tailwinds there, so I think that's what we'll request. All right, you got a good look at Sarasota during the intro. While I'm calling clearance delivery, why don't we have a look at Daytona Beach? Sarasota Ground, November 6494, Papa, Dolphin Aviation, Taxi with India. Taxi and hold short, runway 32 via Alpha, Alpha 9, cross runway 22, November 6494, Papa. Alright, we're clear all around. Game on. So this Payware Airport by Vertical Sim is just a work of art, and I love, love all Vertical Sims airports. Be sure to check out the video details if you would like a link to it. And even though we're given permission to cross runway 22, I always stop and ask. Sarasota Ground, November 6494 Papa, holding short, runway 22. Cross runway 22, November 6494 Papa. Up on the right, you can see some liveries on the jet liners. That's courtesy of Aerosoft's Simple Traffic, which does a decent job of putting liveries on the jetliners, although they don't always match the airport. And sometimes you've got blank liveries. Over our left here, we've got a jetliner landing. That looks awesome. There's our windsock showing us a bit of a crosswind and Alpha 8. So our next turn is what we're looking for for Alpha 9. And here's Alpha 9. So we'll stop here and do our run-up. Alright, we've got the RPMs already up to 2,000. We'll do a mag left check. 
And whoa, we got a big drop there. That's more than expected. Three to four hundred almost. Back to both. Goes back up. Let's go to mag right. And again, a big drop with the needle really bouncing around. So I'm going to assume I have fouled spark plugs. And I don't see that on the checklist here, so I'm just going to wing it a little bit. So we're going to bring up the RPMs and lean the mixture. So run high RPMs and lean the mixture for 30 seconds. We can see it on the clock here, which is nice. It has a seconds hand. And then we can try the mag drop again. So let's do our mag left and back. And that was a good drop. And you can also see those white dots here on the engine analyzer tell you if you have fouled spark plugs, which currently we don't. So we'll check our flight controls. They are free and correct. We'll get our trim set back to takeoff. There, that's the neutral. Sarasota Tower, November 6494, Papa holding short, runway 32. Cleared for takeoff, runway 32, November 6494, Papa. All right, came on. We've got a little bit of a crosswind coming from the left. Couple stutters going on here. Get ourselves lined up on 3 2. Rotation speed is 85, but when the aircraft's a bit lighter, uh, we might end up rotating a little bit before that. Speeds alive, getting a little squirrely here. I think it's the crosswind 80 and rotate. All right, not too bad now that we're up in the air. We've got positive rate, bringing up our gear. Let's adjust our trim here so we can get our 105 VY climb speed. And we're going to get radar vectors to our first waypoint, which we are at. Alright, we've got the autopilot on to help us out at this point. We're up at our target altitude of 5,000, so let's sit back and enjoy that awesome flight simulator scenery.
right, as I get everything shut down here, I will take you through the flight brief. We got our red headlamp on so we can see what we're doing. So that was an awesome flight. It was a little bit long at 150 nautical miles. Uh, and it was definitely interesting knowing that we had a lot of weather going on and I needed to use for flight and keep an eye on what was happening at Daytona as we were approaching it. But sure enough, everything cleared out. We still had some haze and low visibility, so I'm glad that we were flying IFR. Um, but we didn't run into any big problems. It was a bit gusty there. You could see in the middle of the montage with the plane moving around quite a bit. But the actual landing was pretty smooth and fairly calm. So I hope you enjoy realistic general aviation flying like this. If you do, be sure to click that like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. It really helps the channel. Thanks, as always, for flying along with me, and stay tuned for further flight adventures.